Nightingale's endgame is, well, basically forging the most broken ingots and converting them into OP gear to one-shot hordes of enemies, rush to the vault boss and quickly tap it down, reap the rewards and, well, unlock all the best blueprints from the watch to have everything locked. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Foriam, and in today's ultimate endgame guide, we're going to do exactly that. I will show you essential tips and tricks to craft maxed out ingots with broken stats, infinitely multiply ingots and lumber to then craft the best gear in the game. Complete vault runs in no time to officially farm tier 3 essence and unlock everything you want to have in Nightingale. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit late to the party for this specific guide, as I spent a lot of time on my previous guides. Well, in this one, I want to cover everything you need to know. As I saw videos out there, which cover only certain aspects you want to know about basically creating the best gear you want to have for the end game in Nightingale. All right, so let's start off with manipulating ingots, how you can get insane stat bonuses, double, triple, quadruple, or basically maximize your damage output with a pretty cheesy technique, which I honestly thought was going to be patched by now. So check out this Pursuit Ingot. It has 25% increased range damage, 7.5 critical damage, and 15 durability. Well, if we look at this bad boy right here, that's a 225, almost 70% crit damage. We also have the Anidia right here, so if I throw that in, this one comes with a range damage of 30% by default, so more than the Pursuit, while if we look at the manipulated one, this one has 270, so even higher compared to the pursuit ingot so very important guys if you are not great at landing shots on the weak spots this can actually be a less interesting ingot as the inidia comes with a lot more range damage while it doesn't come with increased critical strike so if you do happen to crit inidia is going to be less performant while pursuit only relevant if you crit and land those weak spots so now for the crazy part, how do you make these ingots deal so much damage? You want to focus on one which already comes with a nice amount of base stats. Check this one out, it comes with 30% melee damage, 10% crit, a lot of strength and durability, which I also converted a couple days ago. So right now I have one with 270 melee damage, 90% critical strike damage, and 270 strength as well. So this is definitely something you want to have for all your tools from melee crafts, basically, your axe, your pickaxe, as then you're going to hit like a truck. So let's convert this one into something that's going to be more powerful. So right now we want to focus on crafting something with two different items. Check out the refined action right here. For this one, you're going to need both an action and mechanical gears. So let's first make an action. We're going to auto fill with a palisadic ingot. So this one comes with 30% strength, 30% melee damage. We're going to craft one right here. And we're going to use our secondary forge to make some mechanical gears as well. So we're going to throw in the exact same type of ingot with also the same stats. Craft that one, which both is going to take only a couple seconds of time. We have an action of palisadic ingot with 30% both melee damage and strength. And also the gears with the exact same stats. Right now though, if we go back to the hearth and now create a refined action with both these items... Check it out, we actually double both the strength and the melee from 30 to 60%. So with this refined action right here, we basically double the stats of this type of ingot. Right now though, with the refined action, we can't really craft anything. So this is where the magic happens. You want to make an ingot, refined ingot, with two of these items. Because then we can basically turn it back into a reclaimed ingot, which is a regular palisadic ingot. 30, 10, 30, 20 on the stats, while this one comes with 60, 20, 60, 40. Double the amount. So right now we can basically get rid of the older ones, leave them in the regular chest. And this is where the magic happens, ladies and gentlemen. I honestly thought this was going to be patched on day one, but that didn't happen. So now what we're going to do is throw in those ingots, palisadic, and craft ourselves some buttons. As you only need one of those ingots for it, which we now have two of, if we make two, the quantity is going to be times eight. Check this out. So only two ingots right here convert into eight buttons. And these will also have the exact same stats. 
Right now though, if we go back to the reclaimed ingots, check it out. This is where we can also throw in the buttons, just like we did with the refined action. And now we can craft ourselves four of these pelucidic ingots. So from two, we went to four, but because we have the double amount because of a certain minor realm card, which I'm gonna show you guys in a second, we're gonna get much more ingots. So we can basically multiply the amount of ingots we have. We can make our ingots even more powerful by constantly crafting new refined actions, then turning them back into reclaimed ingots, go back to the action, mechanical gear, refined action, rinse and repeat the process until you get your hands on such powerful ingots which allow you to craft OP weapons and gear basically. So if we have a quick look at the Pursuit ingots right here, the regular ones come with 25%. Go to this chest right here. This is where I made a couple different ones. So we start off with 25, throw in a 25 action, 25 mechanical gears, result is a 50%. Then we go to a 100 if you make new one out of those two items, if you reclaim it. Then we go to 200 and it basically caps at 225. While the Adinias, they cap even higher, 270. So you start off with a 30%, which converts to 60. From 60, you will go to 120. Then you go to uh, 240. And then the absolute maximum is 270. So the card you wanna play to get double the yield with all the items you craft at your furnace, basically, is the Settler Apogen card. I just crafted mine. And if you throw this one on the table, this one will apply all different types of effects. Play this to increase the yield of refined building materials and crops and improve the fortitude of your structures, while it also reduces the rate at which you recover stamina, which is not much of a big deal. If we open up the Builder tab and check out the Trader menu, type in Ascended right here. Ascended Forest Astralable Assist Trader. Open up the shop right here and check out Realm Cards. This is where you will find it, the Settler Apogent card, which is a card you will not come across often. So I definitely recommend you to lock it end game, while otherwise you just have to be lucky by finding it inside a chest. Anyways, be sure to check out this realm if you haven't picked up the card yet and are in the end game already, have access to the watch basically. Anyways, enough about the card. Now, if we get back to our sawmill, you can see that we've already made 98 lumber. Let's wait for the 100 right here so that you can see that it literally doubles everything. So that's 100 lumber right there. If we click that, as you can see the bottom right, we now get 200. So this always doubles the yield. So it would be stupid to not reclaim lumber 24 seven while you can still do it. I mean, we got 200 more right here. It weighs me down big time, but hey, I just keep doing this, get my hands on all the lumber I will ever need for my crafts. So let's make ourselves an insane weapon. I see so many people still play with the Shazpot rifle. It literally makes my eyes bleed. I mean, you want to focus on something that can actually shoot multiple times. Check this one right, right here. We have a total magazine of 14 bullets, which you can afterwards reload very quickly and every single bullet will hit like a truck. So in my opinion, this is an amazing weapon you want to have, which is going to make any type of combat dealing with the vaults a lot easier. So Winchester rifle also picked up at the watch. When you travel to the watch, you basically want to search for the essence traders to the right right here. So the very first one is where you can pick up these crafting refinement stations. Basics, repair, excellent workbench is the thing you're gonna need for those weapons. While for the weapons, you wanna talk with Sadie right here to the left. She has the firearms tab right here with Lee Medford's rifle and all sorts of other ones. While I like to go with the Winchester rifle. For this one, we're gonna need a barrel, a metal plate, a handle, and also a refined action. I always screenshot this with my snipping tool on Windows. Personally, I think this is a very easy one to memorize which items you need, but let's start off with the barrel. So again, very important, remember which of these two ingots is going to be the best for you. Either maximum range damage and no crits, or slightly less range damage and also the crits. For this one, we're gonna focus on the pursuit. 
and we're gonna first make a barrel. So for the barrel, we first need to have a shaft. So we're gonna make a shaft right here with that maxed out ingot with the high ranged critical strike damage. So right now, if we just craft one, we will actually get two for that. So GG. Now we also wanna have that barrel so we can make two barrels will actually turn into four with the card which we threw on the table earlier. We also need one of those metal plates. So we're gonna make that. We also need a refined action, which we already made earlier. So right here, we have it. The refined action palisadic and also an Adina and also a pursuit. So we're just gonna take one of these so last but not least, we also need that handle. So for a handle, you wanna check out the sawmill. Handles require both a pole and the fasteners. So for the fasteners, you wanna get back to the forge, tap in fasteners, throw in the pursuit ingots, and then for the pole itself, it's very important that you also focus on some high quality wood. Swamp wood, because swamp wood comes with ranged damage as well. What's very interesting is that tier four swamp wood actually comes with 5% more range damage. So what I decided to do is convert my tier four into a pretty OP type of wood as well, with also that little claiming technique, which we talked about earlier. So let's quickly take this one as example. Let's just make a regular pole out of tier five. So now we get two in return. So the tier 5 swamp wood wasn't anything too crazy, while the fasteners of pursuit came with insane stats because we bumped up that ingot to all these crazy stats. So if we now combine the resources, we will also get a very nice type of handle which we can use to craft our gun. You know what, let's quickly give you another trick which I think is amazing. So you want to just... Stuff everything into all your working tables. We also have a nice amount of palisadic buttons right here, which we can turn into some um, reclaimed ingot, which literally takes forever. I mean, it will take minutes. While right now, because we have night time, we can just go into the bed and everything will be done instantly. It will process all the items inside both the sawmill and the hearths. So we don't have to wait for anything. Check this out. We have 46, no, times two, 92 pursuit ingots. While we also have 400 more lumber. So that's a lot more slowing our character down. Anyways, now it's time to uh, craft that crazy gun. So if we walk to the table, check out the Winchester rifle. We're gonna first throw in the barrel of pursuit with 225% range damage, 67.5 critical strike damage. We have the metal plate, 225 and the same crit once again. Then also the tier five swap wood handle with also these crazy stats because we threw in the fastener also of the pursuit ingots and also either the palisadic actions we made earlier with a lot of melee and critical strike damage. While of course we want to bump up that ranged damage. So we're gonna craft that right here. While we're doing this though, you also want to visit the enchanter's focus and you want to check out crit at the Death's Infusion. This is also a blueprint which you can pick up at one of the Essence Traders, which you can always find in the tab which we talked about earlier. But if we craft this right here, this will also increase our critical strike damage by 7.5%. We also wanna increase our ranged damage, which you can do also with tier three Essence by another 15%. There we go, Conveyance Infusion. And we also have our Winchester rifle ready. So check this out, ladies and gentlemen, just at 85 right here. If we throw it into the upgrade bench, we go from 85 with the tier one Essence to a 105 on uncommon quality. We can upgrade this one two more times, which now brings us to 153 with over 1,300 damage already to a tier three Winchester rifle of 197. Now you're probably wondering that 206 is gonna be a little bit better, right? Well, we're gonna add this one right here. Check it out. We now go to 201, do that another time we go to 206 as well. So this is the exact same gun, which I already have two times, right now three, which allows you to literally one shot bosses, all sorts of creatures, which I think is one of, if not the best ranged weapon, which you can get your hands on as of today.
Sweet, now you got your hands on a OP ranged weapon with which you can one shot most creatures and tap down bosses inside vaults in no time. So let's also apply this forging strategy on making ourselves some OP weapons while we're at it. The Dauntless Mining Pick and Wooden Axe. For these, we're gonna need a Hardened Pick, Handle, Hilt and Wrap. The handle which we used earlier comes with range damage and critical strike damage. So this is something we don't want to use for this craft. So we're just going to put everything in the box right here. So we're going to take out this advanced lumber right here with 30% strength and 25% increased melee damage. The ingots which I like to use for this craft would be the Palocytic, also upgraded with the method talked about earlier, melee damage, critical strike damage, strength, etc. So now if we create this pig head, it will say a melee damage of 540, a 540% strength while it's capped at that lower level which we talked about earlier. So if we pick it up, you will be able to see that this one actually comes with 270. But that is the absolute maximum. So you don't really have to worry about now going to the hardened pick and throwing in, let's say, a brass ingot with also insane stats as you simply won't be able to top the stats which we already made with the palisadic pick head which we place on this one right now. We also want to focus on the hilt. We're going to need two etched ingots. So what we're going to do is turn those crazy palisadic ingots into etched ingots. And since we have a quantity times two, we only have to craft one right here. We also want to create a handle at the saw table, just like we did for the ranged weapon, for which we need both the fasteners and a pole. So let's first create the fasteners with also the same palisadic ingots with those insane stats right here. And the pole with, of course, that advanced lumber. So there we have our hardened pig heads. We actually got two because of the two times. And last but not least, we also need a wrap. For this one, you want to visit the tanning station as this one can be crafted with straps. So this is going to be a slightly different craft for which we don't really have to do anything too crazy. Just pick two of those straps right here, out of fail, and there we go. I do this with the Janna Heights, which we got from one of those vaults, which you can find in the watch. All right, so now if we go all the way down right here, we can go to the Dauntless Mining Pick, throw in the Hardened Pig Head with that crazy amount of melee damage and critical strike damage, the handle with the same stats, basically, the Hilt with also the Palisadic Ingots and the Rep of Janna Heights with 30% durability. Now we get a total of 2180 damage with 8 times critical. I know this all sounds too good to be true, but, but trust me, when this tool is done, it's gonna hit like a truck. And this is even without any upgrades, which we're gonna add afterwards. The critical strike damage that will already increase our crit every time when we do so and hit weak spots. But we also wanna have increased melee damage another 15 percent you can also add a couple charms or enchantments which we're not going to talk about in this video if you want me to cover the best ones in a future guide let me know in the comments down below anyways here we are back at the workbench we just picked up the mining pick this one already comes with 143 item level or gear score without any upgrades right now we're going to throw it into the workbench see what level it will get we already go to over a thousand six hundred damage with the tier one upgrade now, if we add in the tier 2 essence, we go up to 2,400 with a lot more strength as well. And finally, the tier 3 essence upgrade. Check it out. Over 3,000 melee damage, it says on paper, but in reality, it's going to be much higher. Especially if you crit and hit those weak spots. Wow, you can literally one-shot your opponents, which is extremely satisfying. So here we go, a 255 Dauntless Mining Pick, compared to the one which I had earlier, a 261, which sounds nice and all, but the damage is like doubled, and we haven't even used those infusions yet, so let's throw those on the pickaxe as well. So now we go from 255 to 59, at some critical strike damage as well. There we go, we got to 64, and we can also add some melee damage. So then this weapon is going to be extremely powerful, 271. Yeah, guys, I don't really think I have to compare these on paper. It's an insane difference, but still, this is nothing compared to what they are going to look like when we actually use them in battle. Same counts for the Winchester rifles, which we crafted with the best possible stats, in my opinion. And now our pickaxe also looks golden. It will shine very bright. And we have those blue rifles. So now for a little weapon showcase, let's check out the watch and do one of those vaults See how much damage we can deal with our newly crafted pickaxe and Winchester rifle. 
There we go. Let's check it out. That was a 300k damage right there. Let's uh, take our rifle. Oh, did you see that right there? Almost 200,000 on the final target, but that was a one shot for every single one of them. Very satisfying because, yeah, man, you have 14 bullets in total. You can just keep tapping them from anywhere. Well, get the idea of this gun? Wow, it's so OP. <laughs> now we get to move to the final room. Maybe I'm not the only one in the lobby with OP weapons today, but here we go. So with just a couple shots, it should be down. Sometimes the hitbox doesn't register, which is pretty funky, but there we go. We just two shot the Sun Giant. You can also go with a shot spot rifle, let's say. Bolt action rifles with only one bullet might deal a little bit more damage. While the trade-off is that if you miss it, you will have to do the reloading, which can take a lot of time. Well, with Winchester, you can shoot 14 times in a row before you have to reload. So I think this is the hands down best weapon to make for the end game, as it will be amazing to deal with bigger packs of mobs from a safe distance as well. There we have the next chamber, which is our occupation event, where we have to deal with the Elder Jotun. Big boy tree right there. That's where we want to hit it. <laughs> Did you see that right there? Of course, the Elder Iotan is without doubt the toughest of all three enemies because it's resistant to pretty much all the different damage types, except the Felling Axe. So the Pickaxe isn't even the recommended weapon to take him down. But if you focus on the weak point, one of those root legs, well, you can take it out in just a couple swings. All right, so there you have it. Everything you need to know to make yourself some OP materials, craft the best weapons and armor in the game to one-shot enemies, even bosses. Complete those vault runs in no time. If you found this video helpful, a like would be very much appreciated. Not only will you help out the channel with it, but also other people searching for a guide like this one. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as a lot more is coming your way. Right now, though, it's 4 a.m. out. I want to wish you an amazing day. I'll check you in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace. Peace.